So in this segment, before we get started, um, it might sound like I'm praising Trump a bit too much in this art, um, in this segment, and I want to stress that I'm no fan of his or Bojo the Wonder Clowns. But what you're going to see is kind of the um, the right wing populist Trump returning, and you know this is a guy who, if 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 Trump had stayed the right wing populist that he had done um, in 2016. Uh, before he became president, I think there's a strong chance he could have won the um, the election this year had he pushed for more things like stimulus. Um, he would have had a much better chance of winning. So yeah, I'm just going to give everyone a disclaimer that you know I'm not going to. It will be a bit praiseworthy, but you know, in terms of I'm praising him as you know kind of a student as pol of politics rather than as um, an analyst of politics, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, let's let's get down to it. So uh, President Trump urged um, Congress to amend a 900 billion pound uh, billion dollar um, bill, uh, relief bill to more than triple its stimulus payments to Americans. So what he wants is the 600 to go to 2,000. And um, that's great news um, if this thing does pass because it's a lot more money, uh, especially at a time when people need it desperately, um, especially since, um, you know, the last bill was in May and um, we're going to be talking about that in a bit. And um, so you can see here, you know, Trump here talks about, you know, the foreign aid but money and, you know, he's saying why in this bill is there so much money going to foreign aid rather than going to Americans who obviously, you know, fund the government through taxes. Um, so his statement stunned Capitol Hill, Republicans and Democrats. Um, have been negotiating a coronavirus stimulus rescue package since July and I feel like Trump should have come out much earlier and pushed for this I feel like he's left it very late in the day some people think he's done it to uh, annoy McConnell because McConnell's the one who kind of lowballed the uh, the American public so um, so the package is linked to a, a bigger government spending bill which includes foreign um, aid and funding as well as 1.4 trillion spending on measures to fund federal agencies for the next nine months those agencies will have to shut if the president vetoes or refuses to sign it midnight next monday and so what happens is if if this if this bill doesn't go through um trump uh, essentially it looks like there'll be um a shutdown um the thing is the american um the uh congress can overall trump's veto but i feel like there's a big timing issue here so what trump wants them to do is just quickly just amend the bill um from 600 hundred dollar payments to two thousand dollar payments and i believe aoc and ilhan omar are, have done that or are in the process of doing that in the house so then if they can get that through the house quickly it'll go to the senate um and then they'll vote on it and um, i'm not too big on american politics but i'm pretty sure that's how the, the system goes um, however, Mr. Trump said he would not specifically has not said he would veto the bill, even if he does. U.S. media say there could be enough votes um, from both Democrats and Republicans to override the bill. Um, there was a bit where he, so in Tuesday night's message from the White House, Mr. Trump balked at the spending bill on other countries, arguing um, that this money should go to struggling Americans. This is where he returns to kind of the right wing populist. There, he said the bill contains eighty five point five million for assistance to Cambodia, one hundred thirty four million to Burma and 1.3 billion for Egypt and the Egyptian military. And so those those are valid points here because unless those mon that money is going to help, you know, civilians in those countries, you know, why the, why are America spending this much money because if it is going to help civilians, I get that because there's one way to stop people going to extremism is to give them a stable um a stable foothold in life. But then he goes out further to say this is where the populist aspect comes in. You know, the Egyptian military, which will go out and buy almost exclusively Russian military equipment. So what he's saying is, you know, why are we funding the Egyptian military when they're going to buy um, American equipment? So what he could push for is an amendment to say that um, th this money will go to the Egyptian military, but they can only buy American equipment, which, you know, helps the uh, military industrial complex. Twenty four five million for democracy and gender programs in Pakistan. It's a bit weird. Um, Five hundred five million to Belize. I don't know what country that is. Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. And like I said, if that money goes to you know civilians in those countries to help them, um, to you know help stop them going into gang life, then um that's a great thing. So the money has to go to the right places for it to be worth. I think this is where he gets a bit stupid here. He questioned why the Kennedy Center, a performing arts complex in Washington D.C., was set to receive forty million when it's not open. Well, it's not open because of COVID, and therefore it needs money because it's not making money because it's not open like come on dude and the one billion to allocate to galleries and um, in the capital i think it's really obvious why they've given this money to museums and galleries um clearly the uh people in washington need something to do whilst they're not doing work um which is most of the time uh, mr trump concluded congress has found plenty of money for foreign countries lobbyists and special interests there's that right-wing populist there's that 2016 maverick that won the election and you know even though you know a lot of his rhetoric was racist um, in 2016 and I applaud him you know as a student of the game you know you learn a lot of things and there's the right-wing populists returning again talking about you know why are we giving money to foreign countries and lobbyists and special interests you know the swamp 
we should be giving the money to um, ordinary Americans, the forgotten man. Um, you know, he says people, American people need it. It wasn't their fault. It's China's fault. So there it is again, you know, the man blaming China for this pandemic. I am asking Congress to amend the bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple, um, which is, you know, if, if this bill, if he does manage to get it through, it's great news. So on Tuesday, uh, Joe Biden said the coronavirus bill was merely a down payment and vowed he would press lawmakers to pass on the stimulus bill. The thing is, um, Joseph Biden, you have multiple problems here, which is that um, the uh, Senate, you don't control the Senate. And um, I believe if um, if Purdue and Loeffler lose in Georgia, you're gonna have 50-50. And so if you do pass, if you do try and pass another stimulus bill, um, you might have issues with, you know, uh, people like Joe Manchin and uh, people like that. So, you know, saying this is a down payment is stupid because the last time these people, Americans got any money was in May. So this is a very stupid decision because uh, Mitch McConnell will do his best to block these bills. That's what's gonna happen. So, you know, Joe Biden here saying, trying to lowball the American taxpayer, like you have nothing to lose here, Biden, if Trump increased the money, because he's a lame duck, he's lost. So I don't understand, like, this is the stupidity of these politicians here, the, the neoliberals and sort of the people who don't understand ordinary people. It's been a long time since they've been poor. I can tell you that for free. It's been a long time since they knew um, what it's like to struggle. The most powerful congressional Democrat, House Speaker Pelosi, um, usually a fierce antagonist of the president, said she agreed with Mr. Trump's call for $2,000 one-off stimulus payments for every American. And the thing is, right, what she's doing here is smart politics. What she's doing here is smart politics because this undermines McConnell and the Senate Democrats entirely. This absolutely decimates them because what that means is it puts them against the President Trump. President Trump, who's one of the most... Um, popular uh, Republicans. And what's going to happen is she's going to ask the question to ordinary Republicans, which is, especially the ones in Georgia, right? Why is Mitch McConnell and the Senate Republicans going against um, helping you, the ordinary person? So if Pelosi is smart, which she, you know, this is a smart decision from her, seeing as she got played with the CARES Act in May, um, she has to play this intelligently. Um, you know, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, a staunch ally of the president, uh, responded to Pelosi, welcoming her support for the payments and saying, let's go further and agree with the President Trump that big tech needs to be reined in by winding down Section 230. That's stupid stuff. But what, what you know, with Pelosi, here's an intelligent move for once. And you can see here, you know, hunger spikes, demand rises for f um, food from U.S. food banks. You've got, um, you know, unemployment in the U.S. People don't know what they do because their welfare system isn't that generous. Their welfare system, you know, isn't great. And, you know, you have states and other places, you know, struggling for money here. And so people like Joe Biden and um, Amy Klobuchar don't get it. And we'll be talking about that in a sec. Um, you know, you got Pelosi here saying Republicans repeatedly refuse to say what amount the president wanted for direct checks. At last, the president has agreed to two thousand dollars. And had he done this before the election, he might have had a better shot at winning. But he didn't. And, that's, you know, a massive failure on his part. But it's also his team's part because people like uh, Steve Mnuchin, um, you know, he wanted to global um, the American people. And so, you know, Trump finally kind of um, breaking off the shackles of people like Joe, um, Joe uh, is it Joe Mnuchin? No, Steve Mnuchin. Um, and actually, you know, finally doing something is, is good news for the American public. You know, even if it's this douchebag doing it, at least you're getting something positive. And now we go to our final piece from Amy Klaubuchar, who she just doesn't get it. And I'm glad she lost because I, I think she's been brought down a peg or two. You know, she's the lady that let the uh, the police officer kill George, Flo George Floyd off the hook as well. Never forget that. Amy Klaubuchar is a joke. What you what you make of this very last minute um, scramble of of what we thought was going to proceed here with this relief bill? I kept thinking tonight, well, these pardons are an attack on our very democracy. So the pardons are an issue, um, absolutely, because he's pardoned a lot of war criminals. But you know, the thing is, she sees the um, this change to stimulus far worse. So we go on. See, uh, this is an attack on every American. People who are struggling to get by right now. Out so here she's talking about the stimulus. You know, uh, Trump sort of urged to change it to 2000. And she's saying, well, it's too late to do that. Of work, whose unemployment, the unemployment is going to basically end the day after Christmas if this doesn't pass. People who are out of work, uh, people who need uh, the help. The vaccine distribution, Rachel, is in this $30 billion. These vaccines are not going to just parachute into a small town in the middle of Minnesota. The thing is, right, she's in part she's right because this bill is really important. But the thing is, and Trump left it very late in the day. I don't understand. I still don't understand why he did that. But at the same time, what's going to help these people who are poor and who are unemployed and who are struggling? Six hundred dollars or two thousand dollars? That's the question I leave with you today. And people like her, people like Joe Biden, um, they don't get it. And, you know, what annoys me most is, you know, you guys in America, you could have had Bernie. You could have had Bernie, but um, you all got played. Um, uh, and people voted against their best interests and that seems to happen but people like um, Joe Biden don't know and um, 
What's her name? Clovachar. I clearly have forgotten what it's like to be poor. Let's see Jack. Can't spread over every egg. Not when you're purging the weak, right? What do you know about the weak? You weren't born poor. You've never been hungry. You don't know what it's like to fight and steal and kill just to survive. What it's like to be hungry. They don't get it anymore. So I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.